Hey everybody, welcome. I'm Amy from Amy Sews. Some of you know that and some of you don't. <laughs> Hi Elaine. Oh my gosh, it's three o'clock on the dot. Let's see if anybody else hops in here. You can always rewatch it on Amy Sews, Amy Bachman Sew Unquote YouTube or um, here on Facebook. So we're doing today, we are doing um, applique in the hoop, uh, in the embroidery hoop, right? And it's more about the prep work to um, make sure you get really, really good results, right? Hi, Bonnie. Hi. Hey, Marianne. How you doing, sweetie? Hi, Laurel. Okay, so we are doing a giveaway at the end of the week. If you saw the post, I have a whole week um, of uh, projects started all leading up to the Crystal Workshop, which is only 10 bucks. So we're going to have some fun with that. Um, the word of the day is share because I want you guys to sprinkle this out into the universe because we want to grow our community. Hey, Carol. Hi, Mimi. Hi, Carlotta. Two day off. I know. I picked this because I figure a lot of people who are, are home today. So we appreciate that. Just um, type the word share in and we're going to do a giveaway um at the end of the week right before the crystal workshop i'll let you know we're gonna do a 40 pack of fat quarters so that is super exciting so there's something going on today tuesday wednesday thursday friday and then of course sunday is our um, crystal event so we are getting close to selling out of kits so if you think about joining um the kit's only 15 dollars, which is different than the brother kit over there um, I actually happen to uh, curate some brother kits that are um, very, very hard to find because brother is no longer shipping them. So I am excited about that. All right. What are we doing today? We are doing really prep work, right? Prep work to get the best applique, um, of, you know, results maybe is what you're going to say. So um, a lot of you guys know. Hello, Etta in beautiful Hawaii. A lot of you guys know we have an applique tea towel of the month. Um, and that is traditional applique. However, we have just decided to add an embroidery portion. So you're going to get the applique fabric and the towels, just like we do now, the traceable pattern, which is what we do now. But now there'll be an embroidery option as well. And we are not upcharging for that. So just for $24.95. Tea towels open. You can jump in anytime at Amy Sews. And so let me show you some examples. So I have a very talented staff here. And one thing when you come in and you ask about stabilizers, you ask about fusibles, you ask about um, maybe a thread choice, you're going to get different answers from all of us. None of them are right. None of them are wrong. It's just what works for us. So Lori, who is an impeccable, an impeccable embroiderer because she's so neat and precise about everything. This is one of her towels. This is an OESD design. And if you go to amybachman.com, the bottom right hand side of the page, you can um, order your stuff from there. But you can see how clean the edges are on her applique. That's good prep and good trimming. So normally I would say, oh, I, I use my scan and cut to cut everything out. And I do, but I'm going to show you the scissor method as well. This is a Santa Claus. Now this is a little different. She used satin here. And satin is really hard to work with. There's a little bit of prep work for there. Laurel just asked, are there kits for the um, January 7th class? There is Laurel. You're gonna get some template material, some heat transfer, um, fabric, and you're gonna get um, your crystals. And it's just $15. So. Um, we have a dime kit that's $49 and we have the brother kit, which is good for your scan and cut. If you want to make your own templates, um, it's $89, but there's crystals, flocking templates, the brushes and the activation card. So your canvas workspace, you can automatically um, create your own templates, which is awesome. All right, let's take a break. This, this is felt. And again, no fur, no anything. And it comes down to, yeah, Laurel, you could get it at the store. Um, doing the perfect prep. So let's talk about prep for a minute. This is one of the towel. This is the February tea towel. It's a love towel. And then there's um, ombre effect 
embroidery. This is the embroidery picture. It looks much better than what this does. Um, so let's talk about prep. So whether I'm using my scanning cut, whether I'm using scissors, I prep my fabric. There's a couple things to do. You can starch it, right? And I mean like, like the heavy Niagara starch, you know, a couple layers of that. And I'll give you a hint. When you starch fabric, fabric is all finished. If you pick up this piece of fabric from my store and you take it home, there's a finish on it, okay? When you starch something, I starch it from the back and I take my hand and I rub the starch in and then for a couple seconds and then I press it, right? So if you just can't starch the top of your fabric, whack it with an iron because all that white stuff that comes off in your iron is the starch. So you're not doing yourself any service. So back of your fabric, Rub your starch in, let it sit for a couple seconds or a minute and then iron it and you have much better results. Um, the other thing I really like is Terio Magic. Whether I'm using my scan and cut or not, you guys know I love my scan and cut. It cuts out everything. Um, this is a heavier, like the old school liquid bluing, right? So uh, one squirt of this and you press it and it's the same technique. I spray the back, kind of rub it in. You can let it air dry or you can iron it right? And then it gets very, very stiff. And that's what this looks like. So you can see it's, it doesn't just flop, it has a lot of weight to it. And so that's going to keep all that warp and that weft all those fibers together. Okay, so it cuts cleanly, whether on your scan and cut, or on your um, with scissors. Now, the other prep, especially if I'm doing machine embroidery, and I'm doing something, it's a sweatshirt, it's going to get washed over and over again. You might not wait, want the weight in a quilt, but um, Steam of Steam 2 is my favorite. It's a double fusible, which means there's release paper, fusible web, release paper. So you peel off one side. It's just a quick, gentle iron. It doesn't take a lot of heat or anything. It sticks to your fabric, peel off the backing, and it sticks to your project. And I'm going to show you that when we move over to the embroidery machine. So... You can use any kind of fusible web, like you can use heat and bond light. You can use, just don't use red label heat and bond because it's a no-so product. You can use heat and bond, heat and bond light, heat and bond feather. Steam of Steam 2 is my favorite because I can cut it with my scan and cut, throw it in a bag and come back and use it later because it already has the web on it and it has a nice stick to it. So when you're moving your hoop around, it doesn't, it doesn't slide everywhere. A light coat of Terio Magic also works and regular old school Niagara. Okay, so let's talk scissors. And I know. So there's a couple of different applique scissors. And when oh, I meant to grab poop, I didn't grab a pair. Um, when we talk about applique scissors, you're used to the duck bill, right? They have that big wide pelican beak at the bottom of your scissors. That's traditional applique. I am not a fan of using those in the hoop unless they're the minis. I don't know. Let's see. Should I call Ed? Let's see if he answers his phone. He's in the back. We'll see what happens. I'll see if he can grab me a pair. I can hear his phone ringing. How about that? It's like a personal assistant. Yeah. You're on speakerphone with all of us on Facebook. Could you please run over to where the scissors are? And they're purple, the mini duckbill appliques. They're from Fremore. So they're either up by the cash register or they're back with the other cutters on the grid wall. Can you accept the assignment? Oh, I will attempt to. <laughs> All right. Bye, Wardo. Bye. Well, let's see how that goes. I'm not feeling real positive about it, to be honest with you. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about scissors. These are double curved embroidery scissors. Curved at the tip, curved at the angle. So when you go into your hoop, they're flush, right? There's a flush part right here. The point rolls up so it does not puncture your fabric. These are straight, a single curve embroidery shear, right? So it goes under your curve. These are the straight blade. Um, these are better for cutting battings, backings, um, heavier substrates that you would have in your hoop, but they work well. I just happen to be a fan of the curve. These aren't going to cut anything perfectly in your hoop. There's no bend, there's no nothing. And even if you take your hoop out of your machine, still not gonna be the same. So the applique scissors, we're gonna keep moving along and see if Ed finds them or not. These are like little curved cuticle scissors. These are great for fine 
work. All right. Anybody have any questions so far? We're prepping, right? Whether we are cutting it traditionally or cutting it with our scan and cut. Now, if you cut it with your scan and cut, then you're going to have to prep it one way or the other. Just traditional machine applique, unless you're doing a quilt with a ton of pieces, I still starch, right? Just using this without anything and it doesn't work. Oh, look, he found them. Good job, Ed. I didn't take bets, but we know it was it was a pretty hard find, I have to say, if you don't know what I'm talking about. All right, so here is, now these are from, from Moray. They're $14. They're an awesome investment. And you can see that's the duck bill I talked about. But because these are mini, right, we've got that curve we need to get into our hoop. And then we've got this edge that goes under your fabric. This part goes under your fabric. So as you trim, They're very clean to use. Okay. Joanne says, Amy, hey, if you, I'm going to show their show her comment. If you add fusible, do you starch before or after the application? Um, if I use fusible, I don't starch. It's a one or the other thing. Thank you for asking that. Um, yeah, I do one or the other. Okay. So here is my applique fabric. And I'm one of those weirdos that I prep more than I need because sometimes when I'm doing an embroidery, I just need a crumb of something and it's already prepped. But the Steam of Steam 2 is on here. When I release it, now once you release it, you're never getting it back on, just saying. Once you release it, the paper, this is your release paper, this becomes very sticky. It's not permanent. You can move it 100 times until you apply heat. Okay, so, so you know, that's why one of the reasons why I really like this product. All right, let's head over to the machine and we'll do a little bit of everything. All right, so I'm going to, I have red thread in here only because it's, I know it's going to be hard to see. Can you see the letter A? Let me zoom in a little bit. Right, you can see the letter A, right? Now this, I perfectly cut out with my scan and cut. And you guys know I love my scan and cut. I love my scan and cut boxes. I love the whole, the whole process. So I'm just going to peel this off. So I did cut these with my rotary blade, you know. And if I had my rotary blade with my scan and cut, I did not need to prep it. But why do I want to prep it? Because that fits perfectly on there. And guess what? That steam a seam works awesome. So now when I... I didn't want to turn this into a scan and cut lesson, but your scan and cut reads PES will separate the pieces for your applique, correct? Which is what I did. This is where the controversy comes in. If there is one, the fact that when you do that first one is the trace. So you know where to place everything, right? Now it's going to do the tack down. I don't think I can get my camera in there anymore. So it's going around it one more time. But it's not catching the edges. When appliques are digitized correctly, the trace is the outside, and then there's a tack down stitch. And the tack down stitch holds your applique, holds your applique in place. What I don't care about is because I created this file for my scan and cut, right? I don't care that didn't catch it because I used the steam seam. So right about here, oh, let me do the inside of the A. I'm sorry, guys, with the camera angle here. I'm, I'm holding it, trying to get it to do what it's supposed to do. Hold on, you're going to get dizzy. I I can't find it. All right, so... The tack down, you can't even see because it's on the exact same outside. That's the line I use to cut with, right? When I did the file right in my scan and cut. Or if you have, I know dimes, most softwares, right? I know dimes specifically, you open an, an applique design in the software. You can take the outline, right click, save to artwork, and then export it as an FCM file. You know, it's perfect. People are going to go, well, I go to my scan and cut and I, you know, resize it a little bit. I make it shorter and narrower. So this line catches. 
that's fine, except sometimes you will skew. If it's a complicated shape, it'll skew that and it's not going to work anyway. So we don't care, right? We have steam seam on the back of here or fusible web on the back of here. So what I like to do, I'm going to take my hoop off for a second. So Reed from Embroidery Garden has these hoop, these hoop pads. Now mine is the older style with the handle. I think now they just fit inside the hoop. If um, you don't have these, go to Embroidery Garden and snatch them up because it's the felt on one side and it's a sticky hooping pad on the other. So I'm going to use the felt pad, right? I'm going to take my mini iron. Now you guys buy these and never use them, right? This is the perfect thing. I take my mini iron. I warm it up. That steam a seam fuses in place. I don't care what happens now. I don't need a tack down stitch because it's going nowhere, right? Does that make sense? So this is why I love fusible because my edge is clean. No matter what, how narrow this satin stitch is, and it's narrow. This is one of my beef with, I don't want to say home digitizers, but some digitizers do it too. But the fact that that zigzag is only 2.5. I, I, I like when I digitize something a three, even a three and a half. Now it has to be scale, but this way, there's no way that letter A is coming undone. So now when I go back and finish my embroidery, it's going to be, it's going to be perfect. So those of you that have mad embroidery skills can advance your colors, stitch all your outlines at once and stitch all your outlines at once and then um, put down all your letters, fuse all your letters. And then the step is done and you go back and you complete your colors. This is a personal preference, right? How you want to, how you want to handle this. So there's a trace which shows you where to place everything. There's a tack down that holds it, except if you take that tack down and create it into a scan and cut file, an FCM file, then it's going to be just the way it is. But that's why we have the embroidery garden fusible hoop pads, a little mini iron, and um, there we go, that's a little better. So you can see it's catching it perfectly and there's no frayed edges. Now I'm gonna cut one traditionally for you guys so that you know how to keep it nice and clean as well. So I'm gonna skip through this, cut my colors. I'm working on a, a Brother NQ-17E, if anybody's interested. It's just a 6 by 10 embroidery only. Um, and you can tell it's not the machine I use myself. I'm just going to go back and let's um, go to embroidery and advance through colors. All right, so here is, we're gonna do one more, sorry. Five, six, seven, eight. Perfect, we're gonna do the other M. So it's just gonna do the outline for me. And it should stop when it's done. There should be three color changes and your final color on each, each one. But I may have grabbed the tack down instead. So you're going to get your placement, right? All right, I'm going to slide it out of the hoop a little bit. And again, this is where this the sticky part of these pads come into play. It's on the back of the felt. Because you want to do this on a very flat surface. Yeah. 
So there is my letter M, okay? I'm going to lay this down and it is going to tack this down and then I'm gonna trim it. Got ahead of myself there for a minute. So I'm kind of excited to add embroidery to the tea towel of the month club because it kind of, you know, we have a lot of embroiderers out there, but when we started it, it was really for people who felt like, I always think people get left out that don't have embroidery, can't afford embroidery, aren't interested in embroidery, just want to use good sewing machine skills. So that's, uh, so Marilyn Douglas asked, do I increase the stitch on the, on the software? I don't because I have, a fusible web on there and I don't need to I don't need to go through the hassle and when you do things proportionately then it doesn't always if it's a complex shape it isn't always going to maintain its shape like like a letter a the inside may get wonky so I'm just happy using that now this is untreated this is just Old school applique, if you don't have a scanning cut or any way to pre-cut out your letters, it's on um, the embroidery garden hoop pad on the sticky side because you want this to be flush. When you hold this in your lap, and your hand, and you push up with your fingers, it changes the fabric in the hoop. It loosens it up. And what happens when you go back to put your outline in, it's never going to line up. So we're going to do two different scissors. Here's my favorite, Bent Embroideries. So I just gently kind of lift up and I use the back of my scissor and I cut along that stitch line. This is why I like these turned points, right? I can really get in there. And if I nip a little bit of my thread, I'm not real worried because, but, but here's the other downside. When you go to cut, you get a curved cut if you're not using the back of your scissor to trim. So let's switch to the duckbill applique. So these are the minis. These are the ones, if you have to have a duckbill, I recommend. These are from Fumore. They're only $14. I don't know that they're on the website, but I could get them to you, right? But the big trick is cutting flat. So you're not putting any pressure on that hoop. This is where the duckbills get into trouble, is when you're working inside in a tight spot. Okay. And this is another reason why I love my scanning cut because I don't have to torture myself with these fine little cuts. So anytime you can put a little pressure on the fabric and the more you have to go back and clean something up, the worse it gets. So if you take your time and we get it right the first time. I would even grab that with a pair of tweezers, that little piece, and pull it out. This is where the rubber meets the road right here when it comes to perfect machine applique. You don't want any rough spots in there. Now, some designers, I'm not going to call anybody out, um, actually keep, you have to cut so close or you won't catch anything. Sometimes you can leave a 16th of an inch or something and still get away with it. But that's how clean this needs to be. So you want to keep it on a firm surface. That's why I like this non-stick pad from Embroidery Garden. And um, you want to cut clean. Duck bills are fine with big pieces, but you'll never get this into tiny areas. The double bent curves are my favorite. It doesn't necessarily make them right for everybody, it just makes them right for me. And then when I use my scan and cut, I know it's going to be perfect. But starching this fabric will make it um, much cleaner. And also, it's okay if you use a fusible web, right? You don't have to just, because we're cutting it traditionally, you don't have to use a fusible web, but however, again, a sweatshirt, a baby bib, things are going to be washed and washed and washed. That steam seam or that fusible will make a world of difference in the quality 
um, of your embroidery. So a little bit of starch goes a long ways. If you want to add the extra fusible, it's the way to go. But it's all about prep work when you're doing machine embroidery. I'm not even going to talk about stabilizing because that's also an issue. But you want to trim this flat. You don't want to hold it like this because automatically the fabric arches and pulls away from your project, right? So let me go back, see if you have any questions. Okay. Oh, here. Oh, thank you, Sheila. That's a great question. So, oh, not Sheila. I need better glasses. I apologize, Sunella. Um, when I, that's a great point. So this is the fusible web, my pretty side. This is also a release paper. So it's very difficult to stick on your mat. And I'm just going to say this because it's a not a pet peeve, but it's I've seen so many mats ruined. This is not for your fabric mat. Your fabric mat is when you're only using fabric that you've done nothing to, right? So you use your standard tack mat. And yes, I always put fabric side down and I mirror image everything, whether it's in Canvas Workspace or it's in um, Canvas Workspace or on the machine, I mirror image everything, right? So scanning, the next scanning cut box goes out in February. Jim and I have two projects in the works. I'm not sure what we're gonna what we're gonna do, um, but we always do some sort of. A, every other month is a fabric project, so we just finished this beautiful quilt. I, should, I don't know why I didn't pull my samples. I know why because there's a thousand things going on. We're packing for the cruise, and I'm <laughs> doing cruise projects and store projects. Anyhow. You don't need to know my sad story today. <laughs> um, so yes, I mirror image everything. I cut fabric side down. I never put a fusible web to my mat or I never use a release paper next to my mat because it just causes grief in the end. Um, okay, so Evie asks, it appears you're using a second layer on the app. Okay, can I ask why? I don't know if the second layer is because I'm using the steam a seam and I peel one off and it's sticky and I fuse it back on again. But the gold was just a single layer of fabric. Right. And um, the stripe was pre cut out on my skin and cut. So Evie, I'm sorry. I'm not sure what the second layer is um, what you're doing. All right. Oh, so Barbara said she, um, I love the rhinestone design behind you. Is there a virtual option for the rhinestone class? So yes, January 7th is the rhinestone class. You just go to Amy Sews. It's only $10, right? It's just a workshop. The rhinestone kit is $15, which is dirt nothing. You're going to get rhinestones, the template plastic, and transfer sheets. Um, that uh, was a scanning cut class. We stenciled, fabric painted, and crystalled that. And it may be a separate workshop because Sharon did the class. So if we can convince her, um, Jim is working on independent classes. We're working on getting more independent classes to sell outside of the box subscription, um, which is also there's a class only subscription and a box subscription. So the class only is a little more economical if you want to go there. But every other month we do fabric and then we do a substrate, whether it's cork, vinyl, suede, balsa wood um foiling we've done some crazy stuff and you're like oh this is a dumb project it's not about the project it's about the process and you may put that in your data bank and go oh i do know how to do that or you'll say to yourself oh i'm never doing that again that was painful <laughs> so at least you're learning everything you need to know about your scan and cut which is what we want to do um ryan sold kit is sold out well, i'm still looking at some elaine maybe it's on the website i will double check but they give me a couple hours and I'll open that back up again because I ordered more supplies. It's been a, I'm, I'm grateful for the response, right? I'm as kind of overwhelmed with, oh my gosh, I need more kits. So we're going to get that taken care of. All right. Let's see if we can figure out Evie first, the orange, and then you cut the stripe and put it over the orange. Well, if I did, I didn't mean to. <laughs> I don't think that, no, it's just one layer. So if I overlaid the the A on top, I'm sorry, I, that was a boo-boo, but I was just showing the scan and cut pieces maybe in comparison to just doing them, everything. Oh, the website um, is just, eh. it's 
just amysews.com. I guess I'm logged in as the store, so I apologize. Uh, but yeah, it's just amysews.com, and you'll see all the options um, that are there. And then we did open open the I would say open the cart right to invite more people in. Um, we do have a wait list because I get overwhelmed with how many kits, especially with the surger, because we're doing um, hoodies this month and. I order so much and I panic if I can't get more. So we only open it every once in a while so I can get caught up with the kits and making sure I have time to do everything. Let's just say that. All right. So um, so tomorrow we've got something going on. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there's something going on. So um, if anybody didn't have any other questions, just prep is worth it. Whether you're starching, fusing, good scissors, trim, close, solid surface, um, and you will have excellent looking appliques. Okay, any other questions? Um, so the Scan and Cut Cruise is sold out, I believe. You can reach out to soandsellcruises.com and see if Jamie has any cancellations or any spots that fit you in. Um, that's what we're packing today. So I wanna wish everybody a happy new year. And I want to say thank you so much. I'm going into my 34th year with my retail store. And um, we're excited. We're on our second year for the boxes. Or did we start year three? I don't know. They just go so fast. The scanning cot, the um, serger box, and the applique tea towel of the month, which is now traditional and embroidery. So we're excited about that. Um, well, welcome, Joanne. You're catching the tail end. So, but make sure that you sprinkle this out to the universe for me. I want to build a much bigger community than where we're at um, so I can offer more. And I want to wish everybody a happy, happy new year. So the word is share. If you want to be entered in the drawing at the end of the week, it's a 40 fat quarter pack valued around $80. Um, some of that, so it's a big prize. So anyway, all right, everybody, thank you so much and have a terrific New Year's Day because the more you sell, the more you know. Oh, that was backwards. The more you know, the more you sell. <laughs> and I wasn't drinking last night.